got units in the house. This Pucha. <laughs> 400 years old, this key right here. Yeah. Right? Holding on to it tight for the door. We're here at the main masjid in Sarajevo. You know what would be amazing to see? Since you have a lot of tourists here, it would be amazing to see as these tourists come through if there was a little information center where they can approach it. You have some pamphlets, maybe a translation of the Quran. This would be amazing. We'd be fulfilling our duty of dawah, of sharing this message. I'd love to see that. I think that would fit in amazing here in the main masjid. A dawah information center. Let's do it, Bosnia. Pamphlets like, what's Islam? Islam on Jesus. All these other things. General topics. I think we can do it, Bosnia. What do you think? Make it happen, inshallah. It's a country that's not really visited much yeah. by people like in Australia and New Zealand. And Holy God, please, you're here <laughs> full time. Um, it's all part of the city. And what were you saying about this place right here, the Seven Brothers? Uh, this is like a tomb. We call it uh, Turbe of Seven Bracci. Um, it's like a story, uh, seven good people were buried here uh -huh. and what people like to do, people without knowledge, uh, you see you have on each door, you have like a small zip where you put money through. They, put, they actually put money in here? Yeah, they put money in here. You see? After every time you put some money inside, they like make dua, but people believe that actually the people who are buried here will help them um, uh, to, to connect to Allah. Mm -hmm. People don't know what they're doing, so they're doing a big mistake. Seems like a lot of people who I've interviewed over the years who've left uh, Christianity, Catholicism, because of this very thing. They wanted to pray directly to the Creator yeah. on that pure monotheism, and they left what was called, we know, a shirk. Mm -hmm. But it's strange that we're finding it even yeah, amongst, even some, amongst, amongst us, the Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Cox? Can I? Oh, fine, thank you. Yeah. Can you explain to us like what you were doing? Uh uh. Is it the security guard for them? Uh, 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 no, no, it's security guard. Mm. Uh, so uh, what he says, he actually doesn't really know uh, much about the place. He says what he knows is that seven people who had the same fate, who yeah. died the same way, are buried here. I, I noticed that you were you were praying. Who were you praying to? Uh, I mean, no, I imagine Pokusha and Patakin Tosso because the Kojer Bliska Allah who does say on a Molly's and us. Okay, so what he says basically, he prays only to Allah, but what he does here is he tries to uh, get people who are buried here to pray for them mm -hmm. uh, to Allah. Yeah. Have you have you ever had time to really study uh, the core fundamental belief of Islam called Tawheed? Peter, to that's it, Kadima Vremena da study Rashmalo Islam, Stel Star Tevhidu Islam. You know the beautiful thing about our deen is that uh, Allah has told us through the Prophet that we don't need to go through anybody, that Allah hears, sees all, and we can go straight to Him. We don't have to go through any middleman. Isn't that beautiful? Do you say Tawheed or Tawheed? Same thing in... Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Some people spell it wrong. They say yeah. uh, Tawheed <laughs> instead yeah, of Tawheed. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Tawheed, but rarely people know what it means. This was one of the things that really attracted me to Islam is that direct connection with Allah. That I didn't have to pray to a 
human being to a saint to an angel to anyone other than Allah alone. It was so beautiful. Da ima direktnu konekciju sa Bogom, sa Allahom, to je da ne mora ići pred nekog popa ili frata ili šta ja znam, da bi stvorio tu konekciju ili pred bilo kojim mrtvim da bi ga povezao sa njegovim gospodarom, kaže, ta direktna veza sa Allahom da je privukla. And I've interviewed hundreds of hundreds of Christians and other people of other religions and what they love about Islam, these strange superstitions, incantations, these things that they found in Christianity and Catholicism and now some some people see it coming into Islam you know which is not a part of it they love this teaching of it that you don't need to have, do any strange superstitions there's no one between you and Allah and this is something that really attracts people it goes with our, our human nature kažem je pričao sa stotinama kršćana ljudi koji su koji su sad zainteresovani za islam upravo zbog toga što nema puno suje vjera u islamu, nego imate tu direktnu vezu sa Allahom, pet puta dnevno se molite Bogu i tako. Uglavnom, nisam baš dobar provodio, sada ću. Ma dobro, odlično, super. Da, isto mi ti, jasno. Drago mi je. Ima, tako je. Ok. Allah ima ne. Allah ima ne. That's the beautiful thing that our deen, you know, see, every messenger that Allah sent, they exactly came to call people away from this type of thing. That human beings, sometimes would deviate and they would start to put intermediaries between them and Allah. So Allah will send these messengers, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, David, Ishmael, Isaac, and the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And they all taught us, and the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we don't need no middlemen, that we don't pray to anybody, no dead saint in the ground. We don't even know who at the end of the day is officially a saint who is close to Allah, unless it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. So we pray only to Allah. We don't have to pray to anybody else because there's a very thin line there. And that very thin line is what we're trying to stay away from because it's the one thing that will prevent someone from entering into the mercy of Allah, into the Jannah, and could get someone into the hellfire by committing shirk, by setting up partners with Allah. So may Allah protect us from that. And may we only do something that is just so simple to understand and do, that we only make dua, that we only pray, that my life, my sacrifice, as Allah says in the Quran, is only to the one God, Allah. Pure monotheism. Like he, he's drilled. Like he said they're not praying to them, they give charity, this goes to students, like scholarships, they pray to God. But you see, they got like they should put a sign at least if that's what. Yeah. So we know sense what we talking about before. When you, this is like the 101 of Islam of Tawheed. You see, we have the three categories of Tawheed. So when you study those three, of lordship, Allah's names and attributes of worship. So these things, when they're connected, they're all one. So my worship, my du'a, my prayer. In this case, only for Allah, nobody else. Allah is all hearing, all seeing, all knowing. So He has those perfect names and attributes that only belong to Him. He's one in that. So anyone else who comes along and says some Imam or anyone can hear, all see all, that's a, a breaking of the Tawheed. And when you really know Tawheed, then you know your Deen. And that's when we were asking the brother, had he studied this? He said, not really. So advice for all the people out there in humanity, Muslims, non-Muslims, and this is what you see the not yet Muslims, when they study Islam and they get to know the Tawheed, they accept Islam. But then you have Muslims who really don't know the Tawheed, Tawheed the pure monotheism, then they jump in and they get caught up into these things. And there's the hadith where the Prophet said that one knowledgeable person is heavier on shaitan than a thousand worshippers. Because what happens if you don't have the knowledge, you'll get taken for a ride. Yes, and one, one Imam here in Sarajevo he said a very interesting thing that we as Muslims should understand that we are a much bigger prize for shaitan so that shaitan will do much harder work on us than on somebody who's not a Muslim. So he say like when when you're not a Muslim, shaitan did his job. But if you're Muslim, he'll do anything to trick you, to fool you. So this thing is one of these yeah. examples where a Muslim is putting hard work in to, and he is 
unfortunately succeeding to, to trick many Muslims who don't have this basic knowledge of Islam. He basically told us that they don't pray to these people, that this goes to charity, as, but we know from the example that people don't understand it in that way, that they understand it completely wrong. So they should at least put a sign to explain or why would you even put money where the grave is like we know that this tradition is wrong like whoever reads it it's obvious it's wrong but now for one interest or another it's being wrapped around to fit everybody but the dean is straight you yeah. know what's dean well we see a lot of times people want to usually take a shortcut so now you'll see many people not really studying the dean not praying not doing many of the other acts so you want to take a shortcut and you want to put you know, a dollar, a mark, a penny, whatever the case, and now you think you're going to get a shortcut. There's no shortcuts in the deen. So you have to live the deen according to the Qur'an, the verbatim word of God, Allah, and the Sunnah. So we don't find any of this in there sanctioning this, but we do find doing things like this are what constitute shirk. The works here, ask him, he said, oh, this has been here for 500 years. Like this is the common argument we get when we get to these things that are... Yeah. Not, not comparable with Sharia. That's always been here for 500 years, 600 years. Why would somebody come with something new to change it? So, we can see how how the Shaitan tricks people to give some excuses and not look at it straight and how it is. And one one uh, one thing I advise my brothers and sisters out there is anything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had made prohibited. It's clear. You don't have to do a lot of research. So spend some time, make dua directly to Allah, and do your homework. And inshallah, Allah will make it clear. But if we're going to follow our nafs, our desires, and blindly imitate a people we've seen doing things, we're going to fall into these trips and traps of shaitan. And we're going to block ourselves from the mercy of Allah, and get, which is vast. And we're going to fall into the... We're going to get pimped by the shaitan. And where is shaitan going to end up? In hellfire. And we don't want to end up in hellfire. So learn the tawheed, the pure monotheism, and stick to the crown and sunnah. And we'll be successful, inshallah, on this life and the next. This is more of a superstition. Superstition. That exactly. people are here looking for some kind of good luck, good fortune. Good luck, yeah. Something good to happen to mm -hmm. them, so they're coming here. Why are they going to come from all over places? Yeah. yeah. And you see, this, this is an epidemic. You see this yes, with Christians, yes, yes. with uh, Hindus, with all. And this is what why you, Islam is unique, mm -hmm. because Islam cancels all this cancels out. That, yeah. Islam on the Tawheed, the pure monotheism, sets a limit. I mean, uh, a line. And you can't cross that line of associating partners with other than Allah. So you don't pray to anyone, to a stick, to a stone, to a bone, to a human being, a dead person in the ground. It's exactly. nothing in creation but the one who created you. That's so simple and easy to understand. But people always want to take a shortcut. Yes, as so you now you want to take a shortcut, and you this is a shortcut. So, so this this comes into the effect of good luck charms, like a rabbit's foot, you yes, know, yes, a yes. cat crossing the street, mm. black cat, uh, like throwing, a medallion, uh, Phil, Phil John. Oh, look, you know the black yes. magic and all this stuff. Now you want to throw this in there and try to make it halal. Yeah. It's 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 not halal. It's haram. It's shirk, and we need to call it for what it is. And inshallah, people who don't know, maybe they didn't get the message. Maybe they know. And if you didn't know, now, now you, you know. know. Luck and throwing, this is new shaitan stuff. Islam comes to rid us of all these superstitions, these strange incantations, all these strange, there's so many strange things going on. People worshipping animals, peace, people worshipping dead people in graves, people doing all sorts of superstitions, believing in silly things, crazy things, way out there things. That's the beauty of Islam. Islam is logical. Islam doesn't call you to go against reason. And this is why people go away from what we call re religion or it's the deen is a way of life. People go away from religion altogether because of these strange things. But believe you me, that everything in Islam that the Creator told us to do, it doesn't go against reason and logic. So if you see something that defies a lot of times reason and logic, and again, we don't put our logic over revelation. I'm not saying that. But in prayer, in fasting, in the worship of Allah, all these things, giving zakat, all these things, staying away from fornication, from promiscuity, in the hijab, marriage, avoiding sexual immorality, all these things, the hudud, all these things, 
and go on and on. When you look into the wisdoms behind it, you see that it's something for the benefit of humanity. But when you see a lot of these superstitions that have nothing to do with Islam, and they're weird, doesn't make sense, and it's not a part of the deen, Islam. Let's go. So we're walking through Sarajevo. We just stopped at that place. And inshallah, people can take some of the advice. One thing that's very important is that along with having the intention, the proper intention, that you do things solely for the sake of your Creator, for Allah, you got to have knowledge. It has to be knowledge-based. And that action, so there's those three components, that action has to be based not according to my desires. I can't worship Allah according to my desires. It has to be according to the Qur'an that was sent piecemeal over 23 years as a mercy to mankind and according to how the best example illustrating how to worship Allah we find that in the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. So you have the Quran and the Sunnah and then of course the understanding of the best of generations who understood the deen the best those are his companions. So that's the formula for success. Then you have these great ulama, these scholars who are out there of the methhebs and beyond. And you stick to that, inshallah, and you'll be okay. Let's keep going. Dean, show. Šta je to? Pa ubaciš u tvoje pare. Ubaciš pare. I provočiš. Has anybody ever explained to you what things, how are you? Hello. Has anybody ever explained to you what goes on in the mosque, what the uh, adhan you're hearing means? Um, some of it. Yeah? I, I, I know some, you know. Yeah? I, I, Share with me what you know. Uh, so, well, I know about the imam and, and the, the mirab, um, where it sits. And, uh, particularly um, the, the adhan, you know what he, what the, what the adhan just. Uh, the adhan. Yeah. I don't know. It started with Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, which means God is the greatest. God is the greatest. Yes. Then it says Ashhadu an La ilaha illallah, declaration of that there's nothing worthy of worship except the Creator in Arabic Allah. Yes. Then I bear witness. That's the shahada. Yeah. 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 And this is how someone is because in this adhan, this is Islam. Mm -hmm. This is the whole teachings right there yes. summed up. So then the testimony goes as follows that there's nothing worthy of worship except the Creator and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger. Yes. Now if you didn't know this, that when you testify that Muhammad is the messenger, the last messenger sent by God, you automatically include Jesus, Moses, Abraham, the, the and all the preceding before, messengers. Yes. Because guess what message they came with? That, that uh, God was the, the, the only one. You got it. They yeah, came yeah, with Islam. Yeah. And this yes, is what we practice yes. in Islam. You know what Islam means? Yes. What? No, go on, you tell me. Islam is to submit your will uh, yes. to the Creator. I've, I've and this is how you achieve peace. Yes. Right? So you have the five pillars. Then you have the now the first pillar we just discussed, the pure monotheism of declaring first a negation. Mm -hmm. You're saying, look, I'm not going to worship Jesus. Yes. I'm not going to worship the money in my pocket. I'm not going to worship a stick, a stone, a bone, nothing other than the one who created me. Make sense? Yes. yes, yes. That just goes with our nature. Mm -hmm. And then now if I testify that, like if you guys did that right now, you'd be considered Muslim. That's how simple and easy it is. Yes. Then you'd say, okay, now you got to fulfill, because talk is cheap, you got to fulfill those actions yes. with the pillars, praying five times a day, Giving in the charity, the, the arms, zakat, yeah. yes, fasting uh, during fasting, the month of Ramadan, and, and, and then Hajj. you're there. Yes, yes. You too. You know the African Americans, uh, Muhammad Ali, the uh, yes, Malcolm yes, X. Yes. You have the uh, the transatlantic that came over. This injustice that happened to the African Americans. Yes, yes. The majority of those that were brought unjustly to the Americas were Muslim. Yes, so I Kunta yeah. Kinte was mm -hmm. Muslim. Mm -hmm. He was one who submitted to the will of God. Uh, yeah. You guys yeah. ready to come back to your roots? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Yeah? Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, very interesting. Do you, agree, do you agree with the things that I'm sharing with I, you? I agree with what you've said, yes. yes. Now, now, let me add one more thing. Do you guys come from a Christian background? Or I do come yes. from a Christian yeah. background. Did you, did you know that Islam is the only non-Christian faith, which makes it an article of faith? Because there's a sixth article of faith, faith in there that you believe in the messengers. To believe is Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers ever sent. Mm -hmm. 
if you deny Jesus, yeah. you can buy yourself a one-way ticket to the hellfire in Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to honor him, not as a God or as a literal son of God, but as a messenger of God yes, that yeah. he came with the same message as Abraham, Moses, Jesus, uh, Muhammad, worship only one God. Hero yeah. Israel, as the Bible said, the, the Lord thy God is one. Yeah. That's, that's the universal way of life from the beginning, the first man, Adam, all the messengers until the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, uh -huh. and then he came with the evidence, the Quran. So anybody who's sincere, who genuinely looks at the Quran, because I can make these claims, everyone can make claims, but now you put it to the test, and you read it, open it up, and you say, hold on, there's no way this can come from a human being. So, so I know about him going out into the desert, and, and, and then uh, it's Jibreel or Gabriel, who's giving him the word. Same um, angel yes, yes. that God Almighty communicated yes, yes, to yes, the other prophets, yes. same thing from yeah, here. Yeah. He would seclude himself, the people used to worship idols, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So then from there, yeah. the message yeah. came to him and then he came out to the people yeah. and delivered that message. Yeah. So what we have now, because one, we have a believable message. Like mm -hmm. when I talked about, I'm not talking about worshiping statues or aliens or flying monsters. Mm -hmm. We're talking about worshiping the one who created us. Yep. And then fr from there, now we look at the Quran. We look at the miracle of the Quran, how it's been preserved. Over 23 years, we have it. Now, you can have a translation in Bosnian, in Spanish, in English, but the original is in the Arabic. Mm -hmm. So now, when you look at the preservation of the Quran, mm -hmm. when you look at the things, the prophecies that are mentioned in there, when you look at the facts, not fiction, in there, of the human development of the embryo and other facts that there's no way that this human being this Bedouin in the desert could have known these things yeah. and then other predictions that from his life that he had prophesied and you're like hold on believable message this book could not have come from him or a group of men now you're left with no other alternative but to either turn away or to submit to what God told us to do you yeah. know what I mean yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I, can you tell me um, about the, the uh, type of Islam that uh, was practiced in, in this um, area? God Almighty, when he sent the Quran, then you have the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Same thing as during the time of Jesus. If you're living during the time of Jesus, you'd have to not go ahead and jump over his teachings. You have to go, not worship him, but believe in the message he mm -hmm. came in. He came with the Injil, and he was a walking instruction manual to that. Same thing during yeah. the time of Moses, the Torah. Mm -hmm. He came with the Torah and then he was explaining that. Now you have Prophet Muhammad who came with the Quran and his Sunnah, his example. So those who follow his Sunnah, they would label them Sunnis, the yes. followers of the Sunnah. Yeah. Do you yeah. follow me? Mm -hmm. So this is what you have here. Yep. Yeah. Ah, ah, so Sunni. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So have, have you got, I see you know some prior knowledge. Yeah. Yes. It's very nice we, we, to see you guys here also. Oh yeah, yeah. but we, we've, traveled, we've traveled a lot in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. We travelled a lot in Turkey, and we've also been around in Albania and Bulgaria. Yeah. And so, man, yeah, you guys are like you guys are like family already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah. see, like you know, I, I'm very passionate about sharing the message. There's a lot of misconceptions yes, of about Islam. Yes, yes. yes. And, I, and and what we try to do is, you know, through my program, clear the misconceptions, deliver yeah. the message, share yeah. it. There's no coercion. You can't force someone. But but I, we've seen so many people studying Islam, but they have never been invited. Right. So we also let people know that at any time. Anyone, this is not a way of life that's exclusive to the Arab or the Bosnian. Yes, no. This is for you, for you, for everyone. Yes, yes. So at any time, if someone feels like, look, I just want to connect with my Creator, I believe Muhammad is the messenger, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that's the Shahada, yes. nothing worthy of worship, like the Adhan we yeah. started with, mm -hmm. that I declare that there's nothing worthy of worship except the one who created me, the Creator of the heavens and earth. In, Ar in Arabic, Allah, Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke, He would say, Allah. Elo yes. Elohim, yes. right? Yes. yes. And now I'm going to live according to God's will, not my desires. You're a Muslim. And then you take those baby steps and you start learning and learning, growing, implementing as much as you can. And then when you make a mistake, you turn to God, the most merciful, the most loving, and you keep moving forward. You know what I mean? Like you get off, you fall off the bike, but you get right back yes. on. Yeah. yeah. I think the okay. prayer is going to start. I know, I, got, I would have yeah. gone in, but I, I don't want to go in while prayers yeah. are on. So. If you guys are still around, uh, if you have any questions, I'll yeah. answer. I'm going to go pray. Okay. What's your name? Thank you. Gary. Gary. Gary, nice meeting you. This is Elaine. Nice meeting you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Did you go up there? Uh, yeah, they put money in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you go put money in there? No. No? No. No, no it's wrong. Man. Why not? There's people doing it. There's many people doing it. There's lots of people doing, even non-Muslims. Yeah. Yeah, I know even non-Muslims doing because it's a, it's traditional Bosnia. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, people think it's going to help them, you know, uh, achieve whatever. So would you tell somebody who was about to put a quarter in there and they asked you, like, should I do it? And, and if you said no, and they said, why? Why not? Uh, I mean, put the quarter in there if you want to, you know, that money goes to charity, I guess. I don't know what they do with it. If you want to put it to charity, give it to charity, it's okay. But if you think that you're putting a quarter in there and praying to these, uh, there, there's seven graves of seven people that used to be good people back here, known like hundreds of years ago. And uh, they, they're not going to help you. They're dead people and people cannot help you in, in terms of, you know, what's, what's uh, especially dead people, they can't help you at, at all. That doesn't make sense. I, don't, I try to say nothing because uh, it's very complicated to explain to people that that's, not, that's fake, that's not gay. But, and usually they say that they don't pray because of that people, from that people. It's like uh, cheating. I will give you some money, but please take the, let's say God, that he sent me some good stuff. So it's like cheating, but uh, the people it's really don't understand that. If, if you try to explain them, and if you really explain them, they understand. They really understand because that dead people, they cannot help themselves, how they can spend, help the others. It's called like the Seven Brothers. And you see people putting quarters and marks and dimes in here. And I was thinking if someone came to you and asked you, hey, Sheikh, because you're a Hafiz, you mm -hmm. know, someone who knows the deen very well, been studying it, what would you be a response to someone who's about to put a quarter or whatnot? What is your uh, response to someone like that who came to ask your advice? Uh, I think that the people... Uh, uh, are when you are in some kind of trouble, when you have difficulties in life, people are hanging for a straw. Basically, they are looking everywhere just to find a solution. But the worst, uh, they uh, many times they don't they don't want to hear, but isn't uh, you ha you have to change. You have to change your uh, circumstances. You have to work on yourself. You have to change. You have to uh, work on your dean, on your life, and everything. You have to change your habits. That's not easy to do. The easy part is to throw a coin, and if you have, or for example, on the, in the West they have like uh, we, we have wishing wells. Wishing wells, yes. Yeah. They throw a coin and they make a wish, but that's a, just a wish. Yeah. You no, know, if you want to uh, make something happen in life, you have to make a plan and go for it and do it. Nothing will come uh, out of the blue. Yeah. That's that's the response. We have to work on, on the with the people to uh, give them the message that they have to work on themselves. They have to change themselves. They have to learn their, their deen, they learn have their to, deen. Yes. Beautiful, yeah. they have to learn the deen, they have to, uh, you, for example, when you buy uh, LCD, or when you buy some sort of a machine, you read the instruction manual, <laughs> but when it comes to uh, so, so some other uh, important things in life, like getting children, who reads the books about children, who, <laughs> who attends lectures, they are, I'll do it like I know, when it comes to, to our deen, which is the most precious thing we have, uh, you have to learn it, you have to read it, you have to attend lectures, you have to listen to the shays, you have to do what they say, you, you can't do it anything on, uh, on yourself. And uh, I believe when we, when we come to the, the last part, people uh, don't listen to those uh, to the scholars, but they don't listen uh, to, uh, they can be very stubborn. So ha people have to uh, change themselves in order for everything to be better. Yeah, beautiful advice. No wishing wells in Islam. Yes, <laughs> basically, uh, I can wish for something to happen. That just, just a wish. Yes. It's an illusion. Yeah. I have to go for it. I have to do something. For yeah. example, our Prophet, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, awesome. he had to work for everything. Yeah. He had to do everything. No shortcuts. Yeah. No shortcuts, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's life. In shortcuts, uh, if you know, we work, we strive for something better. We achieve something good in this life and in the, in the next. You have to use this life as a means to get to the other. But if you don't work, if you don't plant seeds, what can you, uh, what can you, yes, what can you reap on the, uh, on the other side? A friend just told me a story uh, about uh, his uh, colleague. He was uh, traveling with him in my car and uh, they were passing by next to a tomb. And this man, because he was driving, he stopped promptly, he stopped quickly uh, and said he almost forgot uh, to, to put some money in the tomb and like make a wish. He thought it's bad luck if he doesn't stop at, uh, at the Torba. So 
yeah, the superstition about uh, things like that is huge in our country. And yeah, the guy, uh, the same guy doesn't go to the, to the prayer, doesn't go to a masjid. He doesn't have the same fear of Allah if he misses a prayer, but he has a fear if he doesn't. But this, uh, he has a fear if he doesn't want. If he doesn't uh, stop there, it's like superstition. It's like bad luck if you don't stop at this uh, turba to give some money, to put some money there and make a wish, basically. Yeah. He's gonna, uh, so the first interview he's gonna, and then afterwards he's gonna look the camera and talk about the historical. Uh, overall experience been here. With, uh, it was really nice to see all the brothers from UK. We made that UK Sarajevo connection from London to Sarajevo, and I was like, when's it gonna happen? So it finally happened. Alhamdulillah. First of all, they might have fears about Bosnia due to its history. Considering coming over, but they're not quite sure, what would your message be to, to them? Uh, Islam being uh, misrepresented in the media, to be able to hear their dhan, to feel like you're at home. Go to some places, some other countries, your wife's wearing hijab, your sister's wearing hijab, maybe you have, look like uh, a Muslim. You don't have that same welcoming feeling, but here, like you've come home. It's serious yeah. points. Yeah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace, I'm Eddie, your host of The D Show, we're on Islam Channel, and what's amazing about Sarajevo is that it's right next door to you, so why wouldn't you visit? In the heart of Europe, you have Bosnia, this is like the Jerusalem of Europe, and there's so much profound history here, so when I talk to Christians, Christians are amazed because they were the true followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love dearly. So when you look into the history of the Bosnian people, they were those who separated from the church. They believed in Jesus, but they didn't pray to Jesus or worship Jesus. And then when Islam came, the call to worship the Creator alone, not to associate partners with Him, but to worship the one and only one God, Allah, they ended up accepting it. And this is the history of the people. So now, when you go ahead and you look even deeper, you see like in here, in this area, you have the greatest genocide after World War II that happened in this country. And you saw the preservation of churches. You saw how even Muslims were saving at one time Jews by putting them in the Islamic garb, the, the, the niqab. So when you learn all of these, these histories, it debunks much of the false accusations that are out there by the hate machine, by the Islamophobes. So this is one of the things amongst many, we're not gonna talk about the food and the people and the soul of the country that you'll get to experience here in Bosnia. Because they have fresh food. They bring the fresh food in the morning and when they're done, it's like, like when you go back to many of these places, they microwave the food. It's, you don't know if it's been sitting for days. Experience the people now. And I recommend going a little bit. Sometimes you have where, where, where there's a line here. It says where East meets West. So you feel like you're in a different time a different time zone, literally like in the Ottoman Empire, and then you had the Austro-Hungarian time, the buildings are different. You get away from the city and you see the mountains, and we got to uh, experience some of the, the rafting, and you're between two of the canyons, and the rivers are flowing, then you see the waterfalls, and you get out, and you just, you know, the, the welcoming feeling from the people, not that, that fear that sometimes many Muslims, sad to say, are experiencing. Just recently you had two Muslims flushing the toilet twice and waving to each other. They didn't even say Allahu Akbar or Assalamu Alaikum. Now it's just like body language and uh, they got kicked off the plane. You don't have that experience here. It's totally different. Come experience it and inshallah we can hook up because already we made the connection from London to Sarajevo and inshallah maybe you'll find me here.